So you've built a portfolio up that you want to now turn into income in retirement. So the question is, how do we approach this? And more specifically, how much money can we take out of the portfolio every year and not risk running out of money later in retirement? If we haven't met yet, my name is Mark Walhout. I run an investment and financial planning firm called Walhout Financial. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a few different ways you can approach this and ways that you can adapt over time uh, as you go through retirement to sort of avoid that really bad outcome of potentially running out of money. So as a financial planner, I often sit down with people who are getting ready to retire. We're looking at their portfolio as a component of their overall retirement plan. And we're trying to determine how much money can we safely take out of this portfolio every year to kind of last through the entirety of your retirement lifetime and avoid the big risk. I think this is the big one that everyone worries about is, am I going to eventually outlive my savings? Am I going to run out of money? And so there's a couple of approaches that we can take to answer this question. And I'm going to compare them and talk about kind of the benefits and the drawbacks and then give you some takeaways that you can use to you know, incorporate this into your own planning. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And what we're going to look at is a hypothetical couple. Let's say that they're turning 65. They have a million dollars saved up for retirement. And we expect that they're going to live for 30 years and uh, the portfolio that we've built for them is roughly 50% global equities, 50% fixed income. We've assumed an overall rate of return over that 30 year period of about 5% per year. And we've also set the uh, portfolio to uh, index for inflation, meaning that every year as inflation goes up, the withdrawals will go up uh, a little bit to offset the additional costs of inflation. And so what you can see here is we start at a million dollars. Uh, we last the portfolio for 30 years. And really what we're solving for with this calculator is what can we take out? What can we safely take out if all those conditions remain constant? A million dollars, 5% rate of return for 30 years, adjusting the withdrawals for inflation every year a little bit. Uh, how much can we take out every month? Well, roughly that monthly figure comes out to $4,140.49 or just under $50,000 Per year. So the benefits of this approach are it's fairly simple. Um, you can find calculators online. In fact, I use a very simple calculator um, for that uh, analysis. And I'll share that link in the notes because I find it to be a very helpful tool just for high level planning. But the problem with using straight line assumed returns is that in reality, we don't have straight line returns. So Going back to the beginning of the video, 50% stock, 50% bond portfolio. Last year, 2021, the calendar year, that portfolio returned somewhere around 10%. This year, we've had the exact opposite, where that portfolio is down probably about 7 8% so far this year. So we have this issue where this portfolio is fluctuating up and down as we go through retirement. And if we had those perfect straight line returns, we could expect to take out just under you know, $50,000 per year. Uh, but if we go through a period of very poor returns, especially early in retirement, we could deplete that portfolio very, very quickly, not leaving enough money to experience the subsequent recovery in markets whenever it does occur. And then we run into a scenario where we run out of money. And so what I'm going to do now is, is introduce another approach that you can use to looking at this, and it's called uh, using a Monte Carlo simulator. And whenever I talk about Monte Carlo, you know, people are kind of their ears perk up. They're like, oh, that sounds pretty neat. You know, what does what is that and what does that do? Uh, and basically what a Monte Carlo does is it takes um, assumptions that you put into it. So we the assumptions we've already talked about a million dollars at age 65 that are going to last for 30 years. We're ignoring taxes in this example. Um, and, you know, we start with an assumed rate of return for stocks and bonds. We start with assumed historical volatility levels for each of those asset classes. And then we ask the simulator, just simulate for us a whole bunch of different sequences of returns. So in year one, you might have positive 10. In year two, you might have negative eight. Take that situation and multiply it out over 30 years and then run that same scenario 30 times. And the approach is useful because in our experience with stocks and bonds over the past, you know, century that we have data that we can study their patterns. We know that, you know, different periods of returns always look very differently. They, there's a lot of volatility that's incorporated in stocks and bonds and our experience in holding them. 
So the simulator basically just says, look, model me a whole bunch of hypothetical sequences of returns that are going to last me throughout my retirement. And then we can use that information to sort of say, look, like what's the best case scenario here? What's a, you know the, the best sequence of return scenario? What's the likely uh, sequence of return scenario that we could expect is reasonable? And then what's the worst case scenario? And let's make sure that we have a plan in case we experience that really bad run of returns, especially early in retirement. So I'm going to share my screen with you again, and we're going to talk about what that looks like. So the first thing I did uh, in this scenario is I tested out our original assumption from the straight line scenario. In the straight line scenario, 5% every single year, we expected that we were going to be able to take out just under $50,000. So I simulated taking $50,000 out of a 50% stock, 50% bond portfolio over 30 years, but I incorporated those crash test scenarios, that volatility scenario. And what that came out to is that in just over half the scenarios, that withdrawal plan worked. Um, in the really good scenario, which is the one we hope for, you know, you could have a, a, a lot of money left over at the end of retirement. If you just kept taking out that constant $50,000 per year, adjusted for inflation every year, if we have a really good run of returns early in retirement, our portfolio builds to the point that those annual returns, even with inflation, are not going to outpace the growth of the portfolio. In that really, really fantastic scenario, you know, you could end up with more money than when you started retirement down the road. But in that really bad scenario where we go through the first you know, decade, decade and a half of retirement where we have really poor or low returns, negative years or low returning years, kind of what I'm circling here. In that scenario, you deplete the portfolio too rapidly. And then any amount that's left, you know, kind of 10, 15 years into retirement, there's not enough there to experience the subsequent recovery. And then you get into this situation where you kind of you know deplete too quickly or you get into a bit of a spiral. And in that simulated scenario or that set of simulated scenarios, this portfolio ran out around uh, the client's age 86 or just about 20 two years into retirement or 21 years into retirement. And so, you know, we talk about this and we say, okay, well, you know, how do we approach this? We know that kind of in that median case scenario, you're okay, right? You're going to, you're going to be able to live through retirement and then not run out of money, but at least you need to think about either being flexible to reduce spending. If this starts to occur early in retirement, uh, or we need to think about with, you know, lowering our initial withdrawal rate, so that we know that even in a really, really, really bad scenario that we're gonna be okay. And those are two different approaches you can take. So just for fun, I modeled it. What would it take to get that probability up to a much higher level? And what I did is I you know, just started tweaking with the numbers and where I landed was instead of taking just under $50,000 out per year, start out taking just over $35,000 per year. And when I ran that scenario again, as you can see, even if we have that really, really, really bad outcome, that really, really low set of returns early in retirement, as long as you just continue to work that plan, 35,773, and adjust it every year for inflation, you should be okay using you know some reasonable assumptions around returns and uh, reasonable historical assumptions around volatility. Now, the, the downside of this approach is that if you just stuck to that plan, just take 35K out per year, you're probably most likely going to leave a lot of money behind for your heirs. And if that's not something that you want to do, then we need to talk about that. We need to think about, you know, okay, are, we're, we're probably going to look at ratcheting up your spending during retirement as long as we know that this, even, this really awful scenario doesn't come to pass. Um, but at least this would give somebody the comfort that says, look, Mark, I want to retire. I want to take use this portfolio uh, of stocks and bonds to generate income, but I want to you know start at a withdrawal level that I know I can sustain throughout retirement. But I'm not going to need to worry a lot about you know running out of money as I enter retirement. My answer to that person would be, hey, if you don't want to ever withdraw, you know, lower your withdrawals, I would start out probably at this level. But if you are willing to make compromises, if we get into this really bad scenario, sure, you could start out at this level, but we'd have to have a very clear plan or at least a you know high level agreement about what are the things that we would be able to cut back on or would be willing to cut back on if we uh, entered that kind of really bad scenario. So uh, what are the key takeaways uh, from from you know this analysis, from this video? Well, there's, there's really a couple. So, 
the idea of Monte Carlo or using a simulator to kind of model out your retirement um, portfolio plan is to sort of is the mantra kind of hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. You know, we hope for solid returns throughout retirement, but we know through even this, just this last two years, what's going on in the global stock and bond markets that we can't expect steady returns year after year after year. So we need to have a plan for how we're going to adjust to that uh, through time. The second big takeaway is Monte Carlo is a tool. It's not a forecast and use it accordingly. There's a lot of criticism around the use of Monte Carlo. You know, is it appropriate? Is it, does it make sense to use? Um, I think that it is absolutely appropriate. And it makes sense to use as long as you use it in context. It is not a tool that is meant to predict the future. It's a tool that's meant to say, look, we don't know what the future holds. We know that the future is highly uncertain. So let's, you know, run a whole bunch of different scenarios and see kind of how you know, those pan out in large numbers. And we can use that as a tool to make decisions today about how we're going to act. And we know that as time wears on throughout retirement, that we're going to revisit that plan. We're going to retest that plan. We're going to rerun those numbers. And if the situation is good, we can increase withdrawals. If the situation is bad, we can adapt the other way as well. And then the final, the final uh, takeaway from this video is, you know, the, a portfolio is a component, but it's certainly not the entire plan. And so today we've just focused fairly specifically on portfolio withdrawals, but in retirement, you're going to have a lot of other things that are going to come into play that are going to weigh into your retirement plan. So we're talking about Canada pension plan, old age security, potentially a pension. Maybe you're going to downsize your home. We can fold all these other scenarios also inside of a Monte Carlo scenario. That might be an interesting topic for a future video. But just know that you know today we're talking about the portfolio, but there's a lot of other things that go into um, uh, income in retirement that are not related to your portfolio. So I want to make sure that we emphasize that this is not kind of the whole story. There's a whole bunch of other things that come into play. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. For those who want to know the assumptions that I use around returns and the portfolio, I'm going to put a little note in the show notes section. You can uh, check that below. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you want to get more videos around retirement planning, uh, Canada pension plan, old age security, taxes in retirement. Um, yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun making these videos, so I'll, I'm going to keep them going. Uh, and I hope that you're having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon. Take care.